Hey everybody, Jason Spangler, the Santee Swapper here. I'm actually about to go on vacation next week, but before I did that, I wanted to do a little unboxing because I've got this prior to mail box that came in and I didn't want to leave it here in the office. I, I need to respond back to the collector or scouter who sent it to me and got to do an unboxing in order to find out what's in here. So I'm going to get right into that. Uh, first off, I kind of wore this just for fun today. This is a, a 1990 Dixie Fellowship contingent t-shirt from Muskogee Lodge with the Ninja Turtles on it. My wife hates this shirt and so I didn't really do it today to rub her but I thought you all might enjoy the fact that I get to wear just random Boy Scout t-shirts to work every day. So uh, let me say a little bit about this collection. I really don't know much about this collection. I've gotten no pictures, very little input from the gentleman. Uh, what I understand is that he grew up in Kentucky and he lives in North Carolina now, and he's about to retire. He just got an offer and sold his house, and he's on his way to Florida. I guess everybody retires to Florida. And um, so he had been dragging this stuff around, and he didn't want it to, uh, you know, to, to, to go to waste. And so he wanted to put it back in the hands of collectors. And so that's what I've got for you today. I have no idea. Absolutely, I've got no pictures, no description from him of anything that's in this box. I have no idea. So this could be a major collection. This could be a major bust. I don't have any idea what's in here. So we'll just we'll just be surprised, won't we? Okay. So let's see. Da, da, da. It's not very heavy, by the way. So at least that tells me uh, it weighs um, three pounds and about, about three ounces. So it's not not a very heavy box. That probably means patches. Uh, maybe some neckerchiefs, that kind of thing. Okay. So let's see what we got here. All right. Time to keep a few things. <laughs> he said, uh, I decided to keep a few select items just in case there's a grandchild in the future. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. All right. So let's see what he's got. So 1964 Jamboree neckerchief. It's got two of them. So it kind of makes me wonder if this guy went to the 64 Jamboree. Uh, that's ironic because it seems like um, the, the, all the collections I've, I've gotten in over the last month of June have all been from scouters who went to either the 64 or in one case the 69 Jamboree. So another 64 Jamboree neckerchief. Woohoo! That's exciting. I'll, uh, <laughs> uh, if I can, I'll, I'll put that to the side and take that to the uh, 2021 Jamboree and maybe try to find someone to trade with up there. So indeed, this is a Kentucky collection, and so we have here... Uh, old Kentucky Home Council Scout Camps uh, neckerchief still in the bag. Got another neckerchief here. This is going to be from Zip Kala Shah, Lodge 123. If I can get, if I can unfold it here for you guys. Okay, I guess he's got it folded somewhat awkwardly. But how about that? All right. Whoa. So you can see that guy. So 1965, the 50th anniversary of the Order of the Arrow, uh, Zip Kala Shah. So I think that's um, I think that's Lexington, Kentucky. I could be wrong. Somebody can put it in the comments if I'm wrong. I think that's Lexington, Kentucky. And then so from that too, we have these Kalashaw lodge flaps. So lodge flap would have been worn right here on the on the pocket of a uniform. Um, so there's a yellow one here. I don't remember this. I don't have it memorized. I think yellow might be a brotherhood um, designate brotherhood membership in the Order of the Arrow, and I think maybe red designates um, ordeal membership. These look to all be the same flap, so it looks like he just had a stack of these. They're all uh, unsewn, and he probably uh, maybe trade, took them to the 64 Jamboree, if that's what I'm seeing here, and did some trading. So we'll kind of see what else is out here. All right, this looks like a District Camp Three patch. Here's a Zit Kalashaw Fellowship patch. It's kind of a cute patch there, 1963 Circus from that area. More evidence of the 64 Jamborees. So at these Jamborees, uh, during that time, you had 12 different regions around the country. And so this was the Region 5 contingent patch, and this was the Region 12, which was out in California, the West Coast. And so definitely, I think this guy went to the 64 Jamboree. Here's a camp patch it's got there. This is Muskegon Valley Council. This is most likely, just based on looking at it, a council patch. And so let me just explain that because I do have some younger collectors that will watch these videos. So before you had CSPs and every council had CSPs, which 
during the 1960s, you had a lot of uniforms that had red and white strips on them, or maybe the scouts just wore community strips. And so to have a patch that kind of represented the council, a lot of times these were rounds or even odd shaped patches. And so this patch probably was not issued for a specific event. That's why there's no date on it. There's no activity name indicated. It's just like a council patch. And so the abbreviation that collectors use for this is a CP. Um, they're not very common today. Not many councils will make these patches. They'll typically make council shoulder strips and just make all kinds of different ones. But back in the day, a lot of councils had a sort of a round or a, uh, an odd shape patch for that. So old camp patches, nice, love that kind of stuff. Again, Zakala Shah, Cover Bridge, that's another Kentucky. That's more Zakala Shah. We saw this patch already. It's like he's got a couple of them in here. So some duplicates on that. That's kind of cool. Eager Beaver, summer of 1964 from Zakala Shah. Screaming Eagles, more Zit Shaw stuff. So a bunch of activity patches from that. So the guy was obviously pretty active there. This is from New York. So this one might've been something he traded for at some point, Buckskin Lodge, Nassau County. Then here's a trail medal. So just to kind of read the back here, it says um, this scout hiked the Boone Trail and you can look at the front here and that's actually got some information on it. So again, just to give a little history for newer collectors, um, through all the years of scouting, especially probably from the after the war until the uh, up to now, there's been historic trails that scouts could hike and then you could also order a medal at uh, having completed it. Sometimes there was a set of requirements you had to complete in order to qualify for the medal. So there's a whole niche in the hobby of historical trail medals and patches. And so this Boone Trail, I'm guessing, is one that's in Kentucky. I'm just going to make that assumption. He's got another one here. This one says Staff Gettysburg Addressed. Okay, interesting. I'll do a little research on that. That one's not... It's got on the back 1963 written in a marker. But that is unusual because it doesn't necessarily look like a trail medal. It could have been something for a commemoration of the Gettysburg Address. Um... You know, the, the 1960s, you had the centennial of the Civil War, and so there's a lot of stuff around that time period. Flags of the Nation. Okay, interesting. Check that pin out. That's kind of cool. Again, I don't know if that's a scouting pin necessarily, but that's a pretty cool little ribbon on there. Hmm, not bad. All right, 64 Jamboree. So we've got the patches, the leather... That's probably going to be a decal. Yeah, the decal, the jacket patch. And so all of this stuff is stuff that typically what I do is I try to hold on to it and trade it at the Jamboree. Um, there's a lot of these made, all these Jamboree items. They made a lot of them. So uh, they're really cool for trading uh, all these years later. But they're just not that rare in terms of trying to find someone who doesn't have one and would be interested in buying it. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Some more camp patches. Scouting's Golden Year, 1960 SOR. Hmm, I don't know what that's for. Wilson Scout Reservation, National Capital Area Council. I am not familiar with the, I'm familiar with the uh, National Capital Area Council. I'm not familiar with Wilson Scout Reservation. Never heard of that one before. So luckily I've got a copy of the book that, uh, let's see, my old friend, uh, uh, Bob, uh, get his name right, Bob Sherman. And uh, Dave Minahan and Kevin Doyle, I think. I can't remember who the third author is. Anyways, the camp book lays out all the BSA camps that have ever existed and has copies of uh, as the listing, so I can look it up there. So here's a patch lecture from South Carolina. I've seen that one, QP Towns, Palmetto Council. Everybody's seen that guy before. This camp patch. This is a junior assistant scoutmaster patch from that time period. <laughs> a Girl Scout patch. I wonder if he had daughters. Uh, he mentioned uh, having a grandchild here, so I wonder if this is maybe he had daughters here. It's, uh, this patch says, my dad's a doodad, a doodad, and there's a couple of those. So I guess I was a doodad at one point because I was a Girl Scout leader. <laughs> Here's a uh, Jamboree solder patch. These are kind of hard to find. Back in uh, this time period, you really didn't have a lot of these Jamboree shoulder strips. And so this one uh, from 1964, not saying it's necessarily rare, but not a lot of councils did these. And what's, other, what's also is kind of interesting is on the back, 
there's a sticker with the name of the scout who traded this patch and it's handwritten. So Taylor Ramsey, who lived in Lakewood, California, I uh, have your patch that you traded at the 64 Jamboree. If you want it back, reach out to me and we can work out a trade. You can trade for it back. Um, that looks to maybe be another Girl Scout patch. I'm not sure, but it kind of looks that way to me. Camp Sewell, this is in Florida. And then here's a, now that's kind of interesting. Okay, check this out. So this might have been his his group. So maybe out of Louisville, I said Lexington earlier. Maybe Zig Kalashaw's Louisville. And you can see there that uh, this is, they went to Jamboree and then also the World's Fair. So that's a pretty cool patch, a true patch from that, from that event. Venture Award. Got some other patches in here. An area meeting, okay, 1966. So I guess that's area, gosh, what is that? Can you kind of make that out? I'm not sure what that, I can see the letter A, and then I can look to see what looks like another design superimposed over that, but I'm just not sure what that is. Do a little homework on that. Little Scoutorama patch, another camp patch, Bird Adams down in Georgia. Oh, okay, we've got some, ooh, got some more goodies in here. I see some more trail medals. You hear the, the jingling going on. All right, let's see what we got here. Ox cart trail, trailblazer. So these little things like on trailblazer on here, even on the medals, you might've had different like awards within the medal. So a trailblazer could have been somebody uh, potentially who helped make the trail, something like that. I'm not sure they probably had different ones for all different groups. Um, this one is Abraham Lincoln. So there could have been sort of a Lincoln trail. And then it has on here a little tiny pin that has a boot. And so probably the boot represents having done a certain amount of length on the trail. Uh, on the back, it says, uh, Scout who walked in Lincoln steps. Pretty cool. All right, we've got another one. You'll see a lot of these from Civil War battlefields that will have uh, this kind of insignia on it. And so this one is the Bluegrass Trail. And there's actually a stamp here, from, I think from Kiwanis International, right there at the bottom. And so maybe they were the ones who sponsored the trail. So that is a really cool looking trail model to someone who grew up in that area. And again, there's a push, pushback pin here that has the horseshoe on it. And that must have represented something. I don't know what, um, but that represented something. All right, a couple more here. Got um, the Perry, let's see, this is October 1962, Perry Village Pilgrimage. And again, trail metal. And then it's got another pin right here as well. So those are pretty cool. Here's another one. Again, Perryville, that one right there. I think that's all the trail medals. Nope, there's one more. All right, and this one is uh, Wyandotte Trail. It's pretty old looking. Nice, all right. Keep going, got some more patches here. Pioneer Award, Camp Lenoche, Camping Award. Some more patches. That's some value from Boy Scouts. Old sewn flat from New York. Here's a conference patch. Old camp patch. Love gold cut edge camp patches. Camp Brady Saunders. I think it's in Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. Here's a camp in Ohio. So this got a lot of camp patches, which maybe that's what people were trading at the 1964 Jamboree. Or camp patches. Here's an old OA flap, that might be a decent one. Then this kick his hand flap, I actually I remember trading for these at the 1989 Jamboree. This is Newport News, Virginia, before they changed their design. Wind check, I think that's Rhode Island. They had that design for a long time. All right, I might as well pull this out. This looks like the really cool thing in here. So a lot of scouts, uh, and actually my son, we still have a red vest for him, but a lot of scouts, would have vests that would they would sew their stuff on and kind of I don't know what really the name for it would be like a brag vest or I'm not sure what you'd call it but this one's really cool sewed on leather this is really sort of what I, I don't know if his mom's uh, sewing machine could really do this well but this is pretty cool here again these are things that he would have done so I'm guessing like he would have been in the panther patrol and obviously his lodge flap we saw those before here's some of these hikes down here different things here. Again, these scatteramas and stuff all from that area. So all, you know, the only patches you would sew on this typically for American scouts would have been scout things that you did. So this is kind of like his 
history of his time in scouting. And then we look at the back, we can see he was in an explorer post. He was a vice president, secretary, treasurer. Um, we had the Zip Kala Shah going again. There's this uh, Boone Trail that the OA Lodge helped put together. More Zip Kala Shah patches. Um, so that's just a really cool piece of history right there. It's a neat, neat thing. I'm almost sort of surprised this isn't what he wouldn't keep for the grandchild, but maybe he kept something like an Eagle Medal or something like that. People, a lot of times when I get these collections, people will keep their merit badge sash and their Eagle Medal because those seem to be things that they earned and maybe they don't feel right about getting rid of them. So just a couple of other things. We're kind of at the end here. A couple more little patches there. Um, another dad's dude patch. Got dupes on that. Oh, this is the gold border though. So maybe that's special. I don't know. Second year of dad's dude. <laughs> a couple other neckerchiefs here. Definitely looks like this would have been a contingent neckerchief for that troop that he would have been in from Louisville. There. And then the Sid Kala Shah that's been worn. So definitely would have been a nice patch. He might have worn some of those contingents. And just a couple other things bouncing around the bottom here. Looks like a little pin, probably from the 64 Jamboree. Yeah, this is a little, little pin on the chain from 64 Jamboree and a couple Jamboree coins. And the very last thing I'm pulling out is a 64 Jamboree hat pin. So that's the end of the collection. So I hope you enjoyed looking through that. It's kind of neat to see these time capsules of people's time and scouting. You can kind of deduce from this that th all of his scouting was done there in Kentucky growing up. And then once he left Kentucky, um, there might have been a little time as a Boy Scout dad in the 80s. I'm sorry, Girl Scout dad in the 80s. That's what I kind of think we saw there. Um, but it doesn't seem like there was any more involvement in scouting. Definitely nothing here from North Carolina that would make me think that when he got to North Carolina that he got back involved in scouting. So that's all good. So the next step is I'll reach out to him and uh, try to make a, a, an agreement to, to purchase these items. And then from there, I'll begin the process of kind of rehoming them to other collectors whether posting them online and making some trades or some sales or some of these items I may even keep. We'll have to just go through my collection and see what fits. So anyways, this was just a, qu a quick short video on a Friday. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed seeing what's in here. Again, my name is Jason Spangler, the Santee Swapper. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to uh, like it. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can go to the Scouting Hot Finds newsletter Facebook page and sign up for notifications so you'll know when I go live. If you're watching this on YouTube, definitely like my video and you can subscribe. I have an entire playlist of just unboxing videos. And so if you like these unboxing videos, there's probably a dozen or 20 of them I've done over the last couple of years that you can watch there. All right, thanks very much, everybody. Jason Spangler.